My name is Mary Ferguson. I'm with the Birches Assisted Living in Clarendon Hills, and my partner, Patty Turkovich, is with Aspired Living in Westmont. We're here today at the Westmont Public Library as part of the, the Together Time program, which is uh, brought to you in part with the Dementia Friendly Westmont. Um, I'm gonna hold this up real quick. For those of you who have um, attended our Together Times, uh, this is just a quick recap on what Dementia Friendly is. It's a grassroots effort that um, Westmont's been working on for the last couple of years. The idea behind it is to create a warm, welcoming environment for those that have dementia and their care partners. And part of that is by providing resources and education and safe spaces for those to experience some, some nice times together. And that is how Together Time uh, came about. With the Westmont Public Library, we're creating some educational programs, activities to spend quality time with those that have um, some sort of dementia. So uh, going forward, we're gonna talk today about some wonderful crafts you can do and ideas to have engagement, have socialization, reminiscing for those with memory impairment. Um, and we're gonna talk about some crafts and activities you can do for the month of October. So I'm gonna talk first of all about, with it being October, most people think of Halloween, even though it's near the end of the month or actually the last day. Um, some of the fun things that we talk about are, you know, certainly candy is what um, my kids would always talk about. But the idea of getting some wonderful um, snacks uh, that are very easy and certainly fun to make. So Patty and I were talking, and one of the things that uh, we both have done is Chex Mix. Um, this is the one we're using today. Uh, Chex.com has a wonderful website that talks about different things you can make with their cereal. Um, and so today we're going to make more of a Halloween uh, theme, but you can do anything from the Muddy Buddies, which are, you know, peanut butter and confection su confectioner sugar, to um, churros, which Pat I think is one of Patty's favorites. Uh, but these are easy. Spice. Oh, pumpkin pie spice. So that's wonderful. Um, but I chose this one today because you don't have to bake this, um, but these are also wonderful snacks. And actually for my son, um, as I was uh, working with this, he said this is one of his favorite ones that he had at college. So I didn't know that, so I learned something. This is actually very sweet. It's wonderful and it's chocolate, so really for me, you can't go wrong. So um, what I did is I just looked at, they have recipes on the back. So again, it's not that this is brand new to any of us, but um, it's just uh, something as of a reminder to let you know um, that there's certain things that you can do. What's nice about this uh, certain activity is it's, um, uses all the different senses because you open up a box of cereal, especially this particular one, and it's sweet, um, it has a wonderful texture to it, um, the smell, all of those things are great sensory for, for your loved one. Um, the best part about this is you can eat this snack as you go. Um, at least that's what I do. The other thing is, depending on what you want to do and your other purpose, um, is you can also make uh, these into different gifts for family and friends. But really what I did is I took the, I did chose the chocolate Chex Mix. It's gluten-free, so somebody that uh, has some gluten issues, this is also a, uh, it's a safe bet for you. What I did though is I added some wonderful pretzels. Now, what's interesting is if it's, um, this is football season, um, and so sometimes you can find the football shaped pretzels. So if you're having a tailgate party, you can uh, do that. If you're, you know, for the bears, you could do get some you know blue and orange M&Ms. You can certainly add it and kind of make it your own. And so that is, is a nice thing. But as you look at all these things, again, these are nice, easy snacks. So these are things you can scoop out, you can pour out, you can put in, in various bowls, and you can decide how much you want to use. Now, if you're making this for families, one of the things I would probably recommend would be to use a spoon to spoon things out. So it might be easier to pour uh, your cereal in a larger bowl, your pretzels, same with that. Um, but again, if you're using good hygiene and it's just for you uh, and, and your loved ones, you know, my thought is go ahead and use your hands. I think it's pretty easy. Um, but what I did is I included marshmallows. I thought this is kind of that fun fall theme. You think about s'mores and having, and, uh, burning your leaves and doing fires outside. So this gives it a nice little flavor as well. It also has a nice fun pop of color. Um, and who doesn't like eating mini marshmallows? I mean, and you can never go wrong with these because you can save them and you can do hot chocolate later. 
Um, so what I did, because I love uh, peanut butter, I have the Reese's Pieces. I thought that would be fun. Also the colors. So you have that Halloween theme of your uh, oranges and your browns, your yellows. Uh, and so it's uh, actually pretty in the mix. Uh, chocolate covered and vanilla covered yogurt raisins. Uh, this is actually requested by my son, so we added that. And of course, you cannot go wrong with your candy corn. Um, so again, wonderful holiday things. It's very easy. Um, and again, what's nice about this is you can kind of snack as you make it. And then as you throw it all in together, which I've already done, um, put it in a nice clear container. It's a lot of fun to eat. Um, as people go through this, you might pick out some of your favorites, but the idea was if you wanted to give it as more of a gift. Um, so I put it in a little uh, jar. You could put it in cellophane bags. I always like the curling ribbon. You can do seraphia. Adds a nice little touch uh, to keep uh, it more as a gift giving. Uh, and, and this is wonderful. Uh, it, it's a nice purposeful activity. Of, of giving uh, to somebody else that all you know we all feel good when we can give something to others uh, whether it's neighbors or friends again this is a wonderful activity to do with somebody whether it's a child a neighbor who's helping uh, you maybe fill in for some time as a caregiver you need a break this is a great activity uh, also it's a great snack time so this is you know have a cup of coffee or a glass of milk or water this could be a nice little way to spend some time together um, and laughing and Again, all the sensory you think about, you know, you're, you're touching, tasting, smelling, um, th this is wonderful. So this is a great, a great way to go. Now, this of course is eating. I'm gonna move on to more of a, a craft that is gonna focus more on maybe some fine motor skills. But one of the things that I came across that I thought was kind of fascinating, I'm gonna move my things over here, is the benefits of doing arts and crafts. I think when we, Think of it, sometimes we may say, oh, it's just busy work or it's just something to, to artwork to put on the wall, but really it has very um, distinct benefits. So first of all, it can be a stress reliever. So for those of you, and of course, in a pandemic that we've, you know, want to spend our time um, in quality time. Uh, we want to have um, stress relievers. So doing different crafts, whether it's cutting, it's using a different part of your brain so for a, a moment or so, you may feel more relaxed because you are um, lowering those stress levels. You're focusing on something else other than maybe what that stressor is. So that's one um, benefit of arts and crafts. Um, the other is confidence. So as we move along and we do different crafts, we might start to build our confidence that we've been more successful. Um, I know for myself that I would not call myself a crafty person, but I will say doing these different um, programs and activities, I tend to lean more to, to, to try things more than I maybe had done before when it comes to arts and crafts. So boosting our confidence, that's always a good thing. Uh, we always want to be successful in what we do, so this is a great way to do that. Um, the other way is that um, it can also increase the way that we're thinking. When we have some projects that we do, you have to maybe think about how you're going to put something together, um, how you're going to cut out a leaf. Again, it's your brain working differently, and so it's a different way of thinking. Um, maybe it's colors, what colors will work together, what textures will work together. Uh, so again, that's a different part that, of your brain that you're using, and that is a benefit. Um, also, for those with dementia, it's a better quality of life because you're doing these with a loved one. So you have that engagement, you have that socialization, and that is very important. Um, it, it can improve the quality of life not only for um, the, the, that one living with dementia, your, your loved one, but yourself as a care partner um, of, of having those, those moments. And again, that's why we do together time to make sure that you have that quality time um, with each other. And the other thing is that um, it can, and I have, I have my notes, so my memory may not be so great at all these, but the other thing is that um, it can also uh, enhance the creation of new neurons um, and increase concentration. And I think for all of us, we could probably use that. And also it in, uh, increases our resilience. Um, and so the idea with that is it's a good brain activity. Think of it that way, um, because you have to use your brain when you're trying to plan out a, a craft. Uh, you're looking again at, at all the different um, 
ways to put it together. So arts and crafts is definitely uh, certainly fun and a nice time to spend together, but it certainly has its health benefits as well. So you don't have to keep that in mind necessarily, but I think it's a nice fact to know that arts and crafts really is more than just a, a way to pass some time. It certainly is a nice uh, way to help yourself um, have a better, uh, better quality of life. So that being said, I'm gonna move on to a craft that I think is, is pretty unique. Um, and again, like I said, I'm not a huge craft person. Patty is much more creative at things and you will find that out if you haven't already, if you've been following us. But I do like to do some things, um, and again, I, I've got a little more confident in, in trying different things. So, you know, again, with October, you're looking at leaves falling. Um, so one of the things that I like to look at is, um, if you don't have leaves on your walk, you can always find a template online, or you can draw one yourself by hand. Um, I did go online, I will admit it was a little bit easier. Um, but I, I did it because I like the different shapes. So when you're looking to create some type of craft with leaves, if you don't have the shape that you find from the leaf on the ground, you can certainly create different ones. And again, that can add a different flair to your, your project. So I have, you know, again, I have these two here. I have your typical maple, which a lot of us probably see on our walks more so than others, or oak. Um, so those are some things that you see. Um, so as you create those and you cut them out, you can do different things with those. So um, one of the things that I thought was really cool that, I, again, I will say um, I came across as I was looking for some creative ideas, um, when we talk about leaves, so I do have some artificial leaves here, but if you did have your leaves that you found or the ones that you did color and you cut out, whether construction paper or you did it with crayons or marker, um, you can create different collages. And so this is one that I just thought was just adorable. So I'm going to show you here, as you can kind of see, it's an owl made out of leaves and some sticks. Very simple, but very creative. It has a lot of thought behind it. But when you think about this is, again, having to put together a, an idea, finding the right colors, finding the right shapes of the leaves, um, and then making it work as an owl. So that I thought was a lot of fun. Um, and you, again, you can use uh, different things. This is probably a little bit more complicated, um, at least I think it is, would be for me, but I think it's a lot of fun. Um, again, if you don't have real leaves, you can create your own. Um, the other one, maybe a little on the simpler side, but also very fun, is this one. So it looks like it would be just construction paper, it could be real leaves, or again, you could do your own coloring um, and create more of that landscape and then you can put it on uh, construction paper or frame. I think framing artwork like this is fantastic. Who doesn't like to have their artwork displayed? And I think it's very creative and very unique. And this one is, is certainly more simple, but I like it because you're looking at the different textures, the different shapes. So these are things that you might find in your um, own backyard. Or if you're on a nature walk, uh, these are things you can pick up along the way. So keep that in mind too when you're walking. Uh, oh, let's pick up this acorn, let's pick up this stick, um, and let's put it to good use. So this is a, certainly a different way to do it, but I do like this as well. I, again, it's a nice craft, but I think these kind of give you an idea of what you can do, um, and they're all on different levels, different colors, different ideas. So be creative. It doesn't have to be anything um, uh, super tough. Again, Patty and I say all the time, it's not rocket science. Do what, what you want. Find what you like and make that creation. Um, the other thing that I found that I thought was a lot of fun was a frame. So first of all, you have a, a blank frame like this, right? Pretty simple, you can buy these you know, local uh, dollar, uh, dollar, dollar and Michaels, Patty said. So you can get this for a dollar. This would be a great way to start making maybe some gifts for someone, um, or just again, a nice activity. But I have this one, cute as a button. Now, unfortunately, my button did fall off here, but you. Ha but this actually is a nice Halloween orange theme, a nice fall theme. So maybe uh, you might want to do this for a loved one that maybe has a school picture. Uh, maybe if you had a different saying or no saying at all. Um, really, it would depend on, on, on what your theme is and who this is for. One of the things that I, you could do the leaves, um, you could do buttons, but I thought these were really pretty too, just your fall stickers. 
So again, you can be as creative as you want. You may have, buttons are one thing that's pretty easy to have around the home. Most people have those. So as you can see, these were pulled out and they have the, the different orange and the yellows, but you could do a browns, you could do blues, you, know, you could do so many different colors. Or you can add some stickers as well and do a completely different thing. You could say, you know, you're the love of my life. You could have just hearts for, you know, in a few months for Valentine's Day, whatever it might be. But be creative as you need to be. You can also cut out flowers and put them around. But as you can see, this is a pretty easy way to, to not do a nice gift. Um, and actually, I think this is just absolutely adorable, personally. So I think hopefully you guys can get an idea of some things that you can do around the house um, that you may have in your own drawers. You can add shredded paper. You can do the buttons. You could do uh, shoelaces. Really anything that you have. You could do pasta. You could do pasta and you could spray paint it a different color. So you can be, again, as creative as you need to be. Um, some are more creative than others. And um, with that being said, I am gonna turn this over to Patty because she has some very creative things that you will see in a, in a few moments. Um, but hopefully these might spark some interest and maybe give you some ideas that you hadn't thought about before that you may wanna try. All right, so I'm gonna pack my stuff up here and Patty is gonna come back in just a moment, but I have all this food that I have to take with me now. And I'm, of course, I am going to eat it, so don't worry, it's not going to go to waste. So, all right. So, thank you so much, and Patty will be back in just a few minutes, and I'm going to come grab the rest of my stuff. Hi, thank you for joining us today. I'm Patty. Um, as Mary said, there are so many benefits to doing arts and crafts activities. Um, but we are in the season of pumpkins. And even though pumpkin spice seems to arrive earlier and earlier, like August in the stores, um, and I don't even know when they start for the coffees, but it just seems that it's kind of permeated our culture. But it is the season of pumpkins. So, hey, pumpkin, here's a few ideas for you. There are pumpkin farms around our area where we live. I would encourage you when the weather is good, take a ride, you know, that is relaxing, it's scenic. Have some music on, make it a nice experience. Get out to a pumpkin farm, walk around, see what they've done to decorate and engage all of their customers. Um, you can go through mazes walking together um, just because they tend to be something that you don't want someone doing on their own, no matter what their age is, and it's just more fun to do things together. But that's a great exercise. It's getting fresh air, it's getting sunshine, and it's taking advantage of the good weather while we still have it. You can choose pumpkins, and most of the areas around here, I don't recall seeing the um, cooking pumpkins as much as just your regular pumpkins for the season. So when you're there, take a look, see what kind they have, see what the options are. Um, if you can pick up a few of the cooking pumpkins, bring them home. That is something that you can use to roast and make a, um, that's my favorite thing, is to make a pumpkin soup. Um, I also use it for pumpkin bread, for pumpkin muffins, pumpkin, you name it. You know, you can do with muffins, donuts, all of the basics, but as I said, my absolute favorite is to make a pumpkin apple soup every fall and to make enough of it so I can freeze it and warm it up on those cold nights that are coming. Um, the other thing about pumpkins is when you get them, and I just have a very inexpensive fake one here, and the reason I picked this up is because it allows me to do a lot more with it and it doesn't rot, which, and it's also lightweight, which may be important for your person. So when you pick out your pumpkins, keep that in mind. You know, when we were younger, it might have been super fun to get the big, big one that you had to lug and tug and carry home. Now, even the smallest ones make it fun and easy for everyone to participate. So I'm sure you're familiar with many different ways to carve a pumpkin and create all sorts of fun patterns. But as we continue with a loved one with this disease, that may not be viable, it may not be safe, and it may be more work than people would want to do. So other ways you can decorate, cut out paper, make faces, little black triangles, make the face, glue them on. You can take markers, paints, and paint on them. 
I like doing that because it allows the pumpkin to stay preserved for a longer period if you're working with a fresh pumpkin. But again, it gives you options of what you can do. And then also, if you're painting or using markers, you can always paint that pumpkin and repurpose it come next year for another activity. And even painting out the season decor that you just did, maybe in November, that will allow you for another craft activity. But then, come next year, you have this at your fingertips. So Mary talked about a lot of the different benefits that crafts allow for us to do. Um, as we look around our homes, we may find we have scraps and bits and pieces. I found this lovely little sheer shimmery fabric that I think kind of looks bewitching. And here's the true irony of today. Mary loves Halloween, but I get to talk about different Halloween <laughs> decor. So by cutting a nice size square, I set that down, and I'm sorry, you're probably not able to see this. I'm going to try adjusting the table, and that's not going to work. So I'm going to hold it up so you can see it a little bit better. So if I just take the pumpkin, drape this over it, kind of gather, and then a couple ways you can do this. You can use a rubber band. I, of course, broke my rubber band playing with it before this program started, but never fail. I do have one of these lovely pipe cleaners that's a nice shimmery, shimmery silver. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tie that around, twisting it to keep this secure. And then I can bring it back, twist it again, just kind of use up more of that length. I find if I can do that, what I like about it is it allows me then to repurpose things down the road. I'm not cheap, I'm practical. I don't like running to stores any more than I have to. And if I can keep reutilizing things, all the better. Better for the environment, better for the waste, etc. And then you can pre-make a bow. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy. I actually went ahead and did this a while ago. So that way, what I'm going to do, if I had a glue gun, which I don't because I don't want to set off smoke detectors here or, mm -hmm. or risk doing so, just gluing that on. And then the other thing is, is we all have bits and pieces that, well, if you do crafts, chances are, or if you receive flowers, or if you have some older plants laying around, big ones that you don't really like anymore, you can cut them up, spray paint them, paint them with regular paint and throw some glitter on them and get something really fun and shimmery that you can then just use to tuck in as you go around. And once this is done, I'm gonna show you my completed one, getting some additional ribbon, giving it a little more life. And here's a nice fun Halloween pumpkin. And I even found this really cute skull. And at first I thought it was X's and O's, which made no sense for Halloween. And then I turned it the correct way and realized it was a skeleton. <laughs> so you have this. And what's great about a craft like this, it's giftable, which may be something people enjoy in your family and your surrounding neighbors, whomever you might want to create something like this for. It's great, easy decor. You can look at it. And anytime I can have something that transcends one season, you know, I might take off the Halloween skeleton ribbon, but have this out then for Thanksgiving. So again, easy, not messy, terribly messy, um, but a lot of fine motor skills. And every time you're touching anything, this fabric, I just love it. You know, it's so shimmery and it gives you something more to talk about in terms of what does this remind you of? How does this feel to you? Choosing color ribbons. Anytime we can empower a loved one to make decisions, to choose something, because let's face it, there's no right or wrong. If you have orange or purple ribbon, there's no right or wrong. You're gonna get one, you're gonna create what you really like, what speaks to you. And that's what we wanna do, is empower our loved ones to know whatever choices they're making, they're gonna make something really beautiful. And what I love about these is, again, it's a nice lightweight decor. You can put it on a mantle, you can put it on your porch, wherever you've got a little spot that you can just tuck something in. You can even do this with bigger pumpkins. And as I said, the pumpkins that I used, 
very inexpensive. Um, they are styrofoam. I think if we paid a dollar for them, that's pushing it. But this is something that allows you a lot of flexibility. Any fabric that you have, you know, even if you have something that's a solid fabric, you can still use that because people are going to catch on to the shape of the pumpkin. And then you can go ahead and decorate that. And then let's just pretend that this is a real pumpkin. And I'm going to try and get it out of here without making too much of a commotion or mess. Um, I've learned my way around this project pretty easily because I've done it a few times. The other thing that you can do with a pumpkin is if you have dried flowers or maybe you have some leaves and dried flowers from your garden if you're a gardener or maybe something just blew into your yard and you're looking at it and you see that it's interesting. You can take small pine cones. You can do a little ribbon, some pine cones, some interesting leaves, some dried flowers, and just make a really simple, elegant floral piece. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because if you created it, it is. It's what you want it to be. Otherwise, you'll keep working on it until you're satisfied. But that is something that you can do to repurpose these or to go into another direction with a craft project. So very fun, easy, gives plenty of opportunity about choice, fine motor skill activities, and just a source to be at peace. Because I love when I'm doing a craft and I get so into it that I've actually lost track of time. And next thing you know, you're looking at something that you've completed and that sense of accomplishment is just wonderful because with these diseases, we all know our loved one has to feel like they're failing and they're struggling. So anytime they have something that they can show that they did and have pride, that's the biggest win we can offer them. So moving on from pumpkins, um, as I said, go for a walk, go to a pumpkin farm if you don't want to. If the um, farmer's markets are still up, I know they can start getting a little slim pickings this time of year. But if so, that may be where you go and get your pumpkins. And if nothing else, there's nothing wrong with going to the grocery store and picking one out there. Because the picking process is part of the fun. What size, what shape, what looks interesting. All of that gives that person choice and that sense of individuality. And we all need our voice to be heard. So that said, that's one project that I have for you. And then I have another one. Um, I've done this for a couple of years now and I have quite a collection. And I don't even know how this got started, but just something as a creative outlet. I started doing um, poison bottles for um, Halloween decor and Mary laughs. And you know, I will tell you, I created these and I actually have done these for a display at work. So on this bottle, um, I had everyone I know collecting empty wine bottles. It kind of shocked me how it didn't take too long to get all that I needed. But this is one that I took and I liked its shape and um, painting bottles. A couple things about that. What I really think is so cool about them is that you can use an array of shapes and textures. There's no right or wrong with colors that you choose. I mean, if you're doing them for Halloween, of course you're gonna go with your orange and blacks. And even this looks a little questionable about what it is, even though it says love potion, but it definitely gives that feeling of being in a mad scientist's lab. And I think that's what's drawn me to these. It's just that whole creative aspect and part of Halloween that people don't often think about, you know? Um, branching away from the zombies and the vampires and all of that stuff that I'm just, I'm personally done with. No offense, but I'm done with. So yes, give me a mad scientist any day. So we have crow's feet here and we also have love potion. And to do these, simply all I did is I took a jar and I took a bottle and I took a number of bottles and just started painting them. and. One of the good things with this project too, you don't have to use high-end paints. You can go to the store, any paint that can be put onto glass or plastic is going to work. Um, I'm actually putting the paint directly on the brush and this is a silver and I probably should have cleaned off this because it's not coming out. Here we go. So as I'm getting this paint on the brush, 
You don't need a lot because you just want to start real slow. And the reason I grabbed my silver paint is one of my favorite bottles I've done to date is Ghost Tears. And all it is is this silver. And you can see how it's just kind of shimmery and you're not quite sure what you're looking at. You can throw salt in there. You can leave it empty. And then once this dries, you might decide you want to go over it and do another coat. And then a couple things that you can do that takes it to that next step is taking your paint and to do this drip, all I did was take my paint bottle and slowly go around again and again and again to let it get a nice thick glop. <laughs> it's the only way I can phrase it. So it can just naturally cascade down the bottle. And you can see how this one with the crow's feet, the orange, I went with orange for crows, and black, how it kind of has that macabre look. But then to get that texturing, all I did was I dipped into just a little bit of another color paint and just whimsically started going up and down to whatever I felt looked good and I stopped. No right, no wrong. Um, labels, I'm not creative. I bought those on Etsy and I have gotten a lot of compliments on these and I think they're kind of fun because I've got crow's feet, witch's tears, witch's brew, all sorts of fun little labels and I have probably about 13 bottles that I put on display. And it kind of makes a statement, Halloween is here, pick your poison, and I've actually used them at my bar for parties. So all of this aside, what I like about it is it's a slow motion, it's calming. Anytime we're doing anything repetitive, it's going to be calming. And as we do that, we're creating something that can then be displayed. These items, I actually had people offering to buy these for me, which just cracks me up because it's basically stuff that was in the dump recycle bins that I pulled out and repurposed. But it just goes to show, you know, one man's junk, another's treasure. And for others, it's another activity that um, we can do that we enjoy. I know I'm getting ahead in the seasons, but this is also another project that you can do for Christmas time. You know, once it's December and we're all thinking snow, a bottle painted white with buttons and a face becomes a snowman. Antlers can become a reindeer very easily. So thinking outside the box, wine bottles are amongst one of the most beneficial tools you will ever come across in the arts and crafts world. But going back to what we're talking about today, I really enjoy doing these potion bottles with our residents because there's no right, there's no wrong. There's that sense of being a little naughty because it's Halloween and you're making a poison bottle. Um, some got a kick out of that when I showed them the label options that we had. Oh my gosh, they had such fun with that. And there was one who couldn't get past the werewolf's bane. And I actually never knew anything like that was real. I just thought it was made up. And they started explaining what it really was and it's truly a deadly toxic plant. <laughs> and so it just creates opportunities to talk about things. Maybe not your typical dinner conversation, but it gives that individual the empowerment to be reminiscing and talking about movies that they saw come Halloween. Um, who is their favorite, you know, creature, you know, who, um, or monster, whatever is going to capture their fancy that they want to talk about. Know your audience always. If this is something that's not appropriate, part of their faith, then you just don't go there. But what you can do is just make some fun, whimsical things that like the love potion bottle, or I have another label that says cat whiskers. So, you know, you can make it light. It doesn't have to be dark Halloween just have fun with it. So I'm going to wrap up actually. So I just want to thank you for your time, your interest, your attention. Hope that you came away with a few ideas of things that you and your loved one can do. As we always say and always remind you, none of this is rocket science. This is also stuff that you don't personally have to do with your loved one. These are great activities to have that friendly neighbor, friendly family member, that person who's on the sideline saying, I just don't know what to do when we're together. I don't know what to say. And I think that's what I love about crafts the most. You don't have to talk because you're both engaged and you're both creating. 
And sometimes that is more meaningful than words. So again, I thank you for your time and interest, and we hope that you dial in for our future programs. Have a great Halloween. Bye-bye.